Greetings, I'm Luke Feast. The title of this video is Using Blended Learning to Support an Intercultural and International Curriculum. The question I investigated was, how might we utilize blended learning pedagogy to produce polyphonic communication to support an intercultural and international curriculum? This is an interesting question to investigate because many universities today are facing much larger and larger class sizes and smaller budgets. Um, and our students are more and more diverse. Moreover, universities today are, tend to be sort of pre-digital institutions. In contrast, our students tend to be more digitally literate. They are more like digital natives. And also, this is an interesting question to answer because many of us recently have had to shift to online education due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So the question I'm interested in answering here really can boil down to how, how can online teaching add value? What I did was I on, aligned online instruction with in-person activity, which connected Māori knowledge of myths to Western Pākehā knowledge of doing group work. And I created online video material with content specifically designed for foreign students. The outcome of this research was that I created knowledge about using blended learning to invite a plurality of voices to be heard as equals within an intercultural curriculum. And I created knowledge about using layering to add modularity to online material to support internationalization. So the two main themes here are, are to do with using online learning to support interculturalization and internationalization of the curriculum. So intercultural means involving two or more cultures, which is especially important in the new context of Aotearoa New Zealand, because New Zealand is a partnership between the indigenous Māori people and Western European colonial culture, the Pākehā culture. Our students do need to have these skills and knowledge for communication and interaction between cultures, but we believe that these kinds of skills are especially important for students from all over the world. I used a particular kind of blended learning which uses asynchronous online learning material aligned with synchronous in-person learning activities. So online students engaged with Māori cultural knowledge and then in person they engaged in a co-design project. Rangitoto is an island in Tamaki Makaurau, also known as Auckland, and is the youngest and largest volcano in the area. It erupted out of the sea and was the site of a series of eruptions, the last occurring about 600 years ago, within the historical memory of Māori. It is one of the most prominent features of the Auckland area. There are a few stories about the origins of Rangitoto. In one story, Rangitoto is the result of the actions of a couple of tipua, or supernatural giants. This is a screenshot from the online video material uh, showing a recording of a story about an island in Auckland called Rangitoto. Um, and this is a story that embodies Māori cultural knowledge. The in-person activity that was aligned with this video uh, was aiming to connect this Māori knowledge with Pākehā knowledge. So the students watched the video of the story um, and then analysed it and worked with a partner to interview each other to figure out what they thought the meaning of the story was. Then they applied that knowledge in creating a group charter or a learning contract um, to support their group work. Here you can see the group charter, which was the in-person activity, and the students applied what they understood from the story of Rangitoto into writing their group contract. Aligning the online activity with the in-person activity created a kind of polyphony as opposed to a monologue, because it invited a plurality of voices to be heard as equals. 
What this created was a partnership between Māori cultural knowledge and Pākehā cultural knowledge. In the second part of the research, I utilised modularity to internationalise the curriculum. There are several different ways to internationalise curriculum. In this case, I provided content designed for both domestic and foreign students. I utilised layering in the online video material to increase the number of different information channels, including video, visual, audio and text channels. Modularity allowed me to introduce multiple languages into the material. So here's a screenshot showing online learning material with Chinese text. By layering the information channels, I could change individual parts without destroying the whole. The implications of this project were that by using online pre-recorded material, it allowed additional design elements. By having layering of different information channels, I was able to introduce modularity, which meant that I could change particular parts without destroying the whole. Furthermore, this allowed me to introduce polyphony and interculturalism into the curriculum. The conclusion from the study has been that online learning is not only about replacing in-person education. It can also be about supplying opportunities for curriculum design and innovation. For example, intercultural curriculum aspects and international curriculum aspects. In this presentation, I'd like to initiate the discussion around online teaching from the perspectives of digital design and acculturation. The paper that I'm going to use as a case study is called Theory and Context Three, which is a paper designed for the second year digital design students at AUT in New Zealand. It furthers students' understanding of the language of cinema, visual effects, animation, and game design and provides tools for analysis through a critical engagement with a variety of theoretical lenses. Before COVID-19, the course used formal lectures followed by discussion tutorials that aim to elucidate information and broaden discussion. After lockdown in New Zealand, I uploaded weekly pre-recorded online lectures that were one-on-one -on -one duration. Due to COVID-19, 11 Chinese students had been trapped in China since February 2020 as the only Chinese academic staff who teach in School of Art and Design. I was assigned the task of delivering tutorials to the Chinese group through a Chinese online platform WeChat. Normally, the tutorial groups were blended with international, domestic, and immigrant students. Due to this special condition, this online group consisted of students with Chinese ethnicity only. During the online teaching period, I delivered five pre-recorded lectures and led 10 weekly Chinese tutorials. Considering the teaching I have undertaken since COVID-19, I'd like to discuss two topics. First, examine online teaching from the perspective of digital design, and second, empowering the Chinese tutorial group. Now let's look at the first topic. As a digital designer, I believe the design of an online curriculum can be hugely influenced by the concepts and series from film, animation, and game design. After COVID-19, my teaching focus can be summarized briefly as producing attractive pre-recorded lectures and arranging interactive tutorials. Self-directed study and interactivity may be considered as the new focuses of curriculum design under this new circumstance. The film theory of spectatorship contributed to designing the pre-recorded lectures to facilitate self-directed study. And I also borrowed ideas from video game design to make the group activity more interactive and engaging. When viewing pre-recorded films at home, students have the option to press the pause, forward, or backward buttons. 
This indicates that students have the potential to jump out of the role of passive viewers. They have more rights and may even become non-linear narrators of the lectures. Students can choose where to start watching and how to connect two sequences together, which is considered as non-linear storyteller. Film theorist Laura Mulvey believes that the audience is able to discover the logical, contextual, and emotional connections, which may not be uh, actually considered by screenwriters and directors. That is to say, watching pre-recorded videos at home may challenge the authority of teachers. Meanwhile, I agree with film theorist Christine Thompson's observation that classic narrative structure is not replaced completely. Applying his theory to online learning and teaching, students may not have enough power to subvert the narrative built by the teachers. However, they start to have more flexible space to construct their own narrative based on the course material as self-directed learners. I consider MC and identification as two important mechanisms in game design that can be brought into interactive and uh, online tutorials. I agree with Rafkin's identification of MC as the willingness of an observer to become part of another's experience, to share the feeling of that experience. Thus, in terms of teaching the Chinese group, I created more thematic sharing sessions on experiences, emotion, and personal situations. For example, when discussing the question of how are various stereotypical characters portrayed in film, I required the students to search online for the stereotypes or conventions of Chinese people as a discussion point to initiate conversation. I encourage the students to criticize the stereotypes of Chinese people from both subjective and objective viewpoints as a group. As a Chinese teacher, I also take part in this conversation by sharing my own understanding of this topic. In this way, empathy might emerge from their hearts. Identification is a sort of connection, a process by which it's possible to relate to other people, stories, situations, and realities. Therefore, building connections between students and strengthening the inner link um, between students and course materials may be the direction of developing a good online tutorial. In practice, I have created a 24-hour online chat room in the Chinese social app WeChat. In this chat room, students, they actually can share their experience and help each other academically whenever they want. As an additional support, I have one office hour per week dedicated to this group to answer students' questions of the pre-recorded course materials in order to build stronger connection between students and teaching materials. Now let's move on to the second topic, empowering the Chinese tutorial group. According to my experience of teaching them, online teaching may enable the Chinese community of learning from linguistic, cultural, emotional, and social perspectives. Language barriers are the main source of challenge for international students. Therefore, it's essential to consider the question of how to help international students to overcome language barriers. In the online tutorials, I used English to deliver most of the content, which is an immersive method of improving students' English level. However, I shifted to Chinese when I need to introduce Western theoretical concepts because it was hard for most Chinese students to understand the advanced theoretical language in English and the Western epistemology beneath the English language as well. Thus, this was not only a language support, but also a cultural support. When discussing Western concepts and theorists in the tutorial, I was trying to bring in cross-cultural perspectives to achieve acculturation. For example, I referred to the Chinese concept Monglong when explaining the Western concept Enigma. Broadly, 
Monlo means blurred and indistinct, or understandable yet indescribable. I explained the similarities and cultural differences between Monlo and Enigma, and utilized Monlo as the prior knowledge for students to understand the new knowledge around Enigma. Barry argue, argues acculturation involves psychological adjustment as individuals integrate into another culture, recognizing that differences exist while still holding a firm sense of one's own cultural identity. Similarly, in the tutorials, I try to help these Chinese students hold a sense of their own cultural identities. Cho and Yu point explicitly to university support structures assuming a central role to ensure international students' psychological well-being. During the COVID-19 period, emotional support becomes more essential as part of the student's support system. Because in recent pandemics, isolation and quarantine have precipitated depression and anxiety. During the lockdown period, we did not only discuss academic topics in tutorials, but also touch the base on issues in daily life. This arrangement helped to ease the students' negative feelings about isolation and supported their psychological well-being. In terms of social support, I tried to initiate belongingness by increasing intergroup contact in teaching. This approach generated effective ties, including positive emotions, empathy, and intergroup friendship, which improves attitudes and reduces prejudice. I found ways to generate meaningful conversations inside the group, supported their further discussions through heuristic inquiry, and gave open suggestions to their questions. In general, this online group may empower Chinese students in class. Yang Peizhong critiques the concept of adaptation. He believes using adaptation assumes international students to be inherently lacking, incompetent, and therefore needing to adapt to the host, with language, cultural, emotional, and social supports. The Chinese students don't have to adapt to the host. Instead, they may become the host of the online space. Thank you.